What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again. Uh, today we're talking about dividing fractions by whole numbers, again using area models, as you heard in the intro song. This goes along with our Keep Change Flip song, but we are doing the conceptual video that hopefully you'll watch before you move on to kind of using that shortcut. Um, and so hopefully you watched the last video, which was dividing whole numbers by fractions, but let's jump into fractions by whole numbers right now. So when we divide, the, uh, the last video we talked about, we talked about how when we divide, we're asking ourselves how many groups of three fit into 12, right? And so that's true. When you divide, that's one of the questions you can be answering is how many groups of, okay? But the other question you could be also be answering when you divide is how many are in each group? And so no matter what you do, right, when you're dividing 12 divided by 3, obviously this is a basic fact, your answer is 4. And so sometimes if it's a word problem, they might give you three groups and you're trying to figure out how many are in each group. So if you split 12 into three groups, there would be four in each group. Or you could also think about it, how many groups of, so how many groups of three could I make? And the answer would also be four, okay? But today it's going to help us to think about division as how many are in each group. When we divide, okay, uh, let's do one-fourth divided by three. And it's hard to think about it as how many groups of three fit into one-fourth. So we're going to choose to think about it today as how many are in each group if we split it into three groups, right? And so it's kind of hard to think about one-fourth splitting it into, um, or splitting it into three groups. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn this into an equivalent fraction. Um, I use the pattern method. You could maybe just know this, but I'm looking for an equivalent fraction that has a three as the numerator. And that will make this a little bit easier for me. And obviously, hopefully, maybe you know this, that's three twelfths. So I'm going to think about this as three twelfths divided into, th or, sorry, divided by three. Okay. So how many would be in each group if I took 3 twelfths and divided it into three equal groups? So I'm going to draw my um, three groups. Okay? So here are my three groups. And obviously, if I have 3 twelfths, right, it would make sense that I would put 1 twelfths here and 1 twelfths here and 1 twelfths here. And so if I am answering the all-important question, which I forgot to click, how many is in each group? Well, ooh, oh, that's fun. 1 12th, right? And so when I answer this question, 1 4th divided by 3, my answer would be 1 12th. So it helps to think about this as how many are in each group when you're dividing a fraction divided by 3, okay? And so obviously that's not the area model, but we do want to conceptually show you what's happening because sometimes when we get caught up in the area models, we don't really think about it. We just know how to do it, and then it becomes a shortcut. Um, and so we're going to do this exact same problem, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put the answer here because I know I just solved this. Maybe. There we go. And I know my answer is going to be 1 12th, okay? Um, but again, I'm trying to figure out, okay, if I have 1 4th and divide it into three groups, how many would be in each group? So let's take my 1 4th, all right? And now I'm going to do the same exact problem, but I'm just going to do it with the area model, how most teachers would teach you. And so I'm going to split this into four equal groups, and I'm going to highlight one-fourth of those right there, okay? And then, again, I want to split this into three groups to figure out how many are in each group. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my one-fourth into three equal groups. Now, when we do fractions, whatever we do to one part, we have to do to everything. So we're going to carry these over and split the whole, whole, Hershey bar, pizza, whatever your teacher wants to call it, into three equal groups. And when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, well, how many are in each group? Well, there's one twelfth here, one twelfth here, right? And one twelfth there. So how many are in each group? One twelfth. And if you notice, my denominator has become 12. There are 12 mm -hmm. equal pieces now in my area model, and there are one twelfth in each piece. So that's kind of what we're doing with the area model. And so we just showed it here conceptually of what's really happening and then this is how you would do it with an area model. Okay, so we have, I believe, one more. Um, oh, there we go. One more. So go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to do 1 6 divided by 4. Again, thinking about 
Okay, if I split 1, 6 into 4 equal groups, how many would be in each group? Okay, so pause the video, try it, and then we'll go over it. So hopefully you just tried it. So I'm going to grab my one hole right here, my pizza, if you will. Um, I like food, so I always think about anything as food. And I'm going to split this into six pieces. Now, you do probably need to split this vertically into six pieces, okay? And that will always help you. And then I'm going to highlight one-sixth of that. And then I want to split this into four groups, okay? And so I'm going to split it into half and then that, which again, we need to just carry all the way down because anything, when you do in fractions, you do one part, you do to all of it. And so now I see that I have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 as my denominator, okay? And how many do I have in each of my four groups right here? Well, I have one, right? And so there's one in each group, which means my new fraction is 1 24th. So 1 6 divided by 4 equals 1 24th, okay? Uh, this is a great way to start conceptually doing it before you just do your keep change flip. But when it comes down to it, you can always just do your keep change flip if this is confusing. We always want to show the conceptual part of it before you just start using shortcuts in math, though, so you can really visualize what's happening as you do the math. That's how you become the best mathematician you can be. As always, please check us out on YouTube at Instruct the Beats. Uh, please subscribe. We need all the subscriptions. And then we have our um, Instagram as well, at Instruct the Beats. Cue the music, Instruct the Beats, out!